hold on real quick. The time, time is 7.24. At this point, I will ask everyone to please stand. And yeah, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag. of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All righty. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, we'll go ahead and ask the city clerk, uh, Ms. Gina Yala, to take roll call. Thank you, Mayor. Huh? Council Member Alejandra Avila. Here. Council Member Monica Garcia. Here. Council Member Ricardo Pacheco. No, he, he's not here. He's not present. He is here. He is here, oh, Mayor. We were notified. He, he was able to join us. Um, Mark, can you open up his audio? Oh, he's not okay, able great. to access his audio. But he did. He did. Um, he did text me that he's here and he could. He's currently him. on. Yeah, he's he's on. Um, Council Member Pacheco, you could also use the chat function while we try to figure out your uh, your um, Can down. You guys hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, there he is. I yes. can hear you. We hear you now. Sorry, I had a hard time getting in and then turning on the mic and all that. But anyways, it was okay. Sure. Thank you. Maria Thank needs you. help. If somebody could call Maria Contreras, she's having a hard time too. Thank you. Council Member Ricardo Pacheco? Yes, here. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, Paul Hernandez? Present. Thank you. And Mayor Manuel Lozano? Mayor? Okay, sorry about that. I was on mute. Okay, everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. I know that, uh, uh, no, hold on, let me see if I can get our, our city treasurer. She wanted to come on board. Is she on? Is she on with us? Yes. No, our, our, our city treasurer, sorry about that. She. Yes, yeah. that was her. Okay, all right, then that's fine. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. Oh yeah, you're, you're welcome. Nice to hear your voice. Um, all right, so at this point, uh, I just wanna, first of all, uh, of course, uh, um, Give tribute to uh, Mr. George Floyd, uh, the family, um, and of course, what's happening throughout the country. I think this is an awakening uh, once again uh, uh, towards uh, the the action the the action that the uh, police officer took in Minnesota. So our condolences goes out to that family, and at the same time, hoping that there's major changes uh, uh, throughout the country. And I believe uh, President Obama also sent out a messages uh, throughout the country and to all the mayors, uh, council members, to take a look. At, uh, at our law enforcement uh, agencies as well. So just our, our condolences. Any, anyone else wishing to close on anyone? All righty, if, if not, at this point, uh, we'll go, do we have any public communications from our city clerk? Do we have any? Mayor, we have some um, presentations before the public communication okay. on the agenda. All right, let me look at those. The one that we have is the domestic violence presentation presented by Ball Park Police Chief. Let's go ahead and move that to the next meeting. Is that okay with everyone? I'm perfectly fine for that. I didn't right. request that, I'll, so no problem. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make a motion to, to move the domestic violence for the following meeting. Uh, is there a second. second? Okay, Madam City Clerk, roll call. Council Member Monica Garcia. Um, before I vote, I wanted to ask what, was there something pressing or what was the, what was the purpose? What I wanted, what I was asking for, just the, the 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 survey, the trends. Of course, you know we've we've been closed up for the past uh, two months. I would just wanted mm -hmm. to see what, what the what the level of service uh, that has been rendered to the community. Uh huh. I, I okay. think it's important to know what what's going on since there. I understand domestic violence has increased during this time of the pandemic. I, I'm very interested in listening to it. Mayor, is it possible instead of doing like the full presentation just to get a, an over, just like an overall gist of what might be happening? Well, then let's get, I'll tell you what, let's get a, a request. And the reason why I did this because it's important. Let's, uh, Chief, let's do a summary, but I wanted to bring it back as well so we could do a whole lengthy uh, okay. time. Is that okay? That's yeah, fine. just a summary would be good. All right. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Alejandra. Thank you also, Monica. All right, Jeet, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, you know, I'll try to break it down into bullet points. Uh, certainly, uh, domestic violence has increased, and there's a lot of dynamics, there's a lot of variables. They've gone into that, and, and if you want me to get into that, I'll, I'll let you know, but you're all aware of why. Um, it has to do with everything that's going on in our country, in our community. So yes, they have increased. Uh, we definitely uh, reach out to them. There's, there's, very, there's various modes. They can be referred by agencies. They can be referred by district attorney. They call us. They walk in. They send us messages. We have officers that go to a scene. Uh, and it may, may not be uh, necessarily domestic violence. It could be a crime, a, a person crime. Uh, so we'll take those two, and, and we're also in a position that if we they don't qualify for our services, we certainly can refer, refer them resources. Um, we contact every victim. We explore every options. Uh, we refer counseling. We uh, refer personal support, we, we, which is really big because of the change of laws this year. Uh, there's a lot of new laws relating to restraining orders. We help them with that. Uh, it's a big issue. It's important. We walk them through the process. We are that liaison between the victim and the district attorney's office. Uh, and we'll go as far to is if we need to walk you through the process of the district attorney's office. If you need us to go to court with you to support you as little as you want us to, as much as you want to, more support, we're there for you as well. Uh, we've got a list of organizations that we can refer them to. Um, our detectives get involved. They work the cases. We work hand in hand with uh, Cynthia Espinosa. As you know, she does everything, all things, community relation, domestic violence. Uh, and, and it's not just a one-time thing, you know. Sometimes they come in, and, and everybody knows this. They come in, they're, they're upset, they've been abused, and then, of course, Sometimes we never hear from them again. Well, you know what? That's not good enough. We're proactive. We reach out to them. And even though they qualify for certain length of time, if six months from now you need us, and we're going to jump into action again, and so we're going to go ahead and continue that support, we do our best to track them. Obviously, uh, U-Visa is a big thing. Uh, we, got, we get a lot of U-Visas. If you're a victim of crime, you qualify. Uh, we try our best to get the process completed and to the district or to the lawyers by six months. Uh, there are mandates, there are laws. We will walk you through the, pot, the process as little or as much help as you need. Um, and of course, they're, they're, you know, once you get to UVs, as you know, they're eligible for, for immigration status as well as other resources. We refer them, for example, the organizations, Neighborhood Legal Council, Victim Compensation and Government Claims Board, Women in Need Growing Strong, AKA WINGS, Victim Information and Notification, uh, other, uh, otherwise known as VINE, uh, LA County Victim Advocate Court System, and any open shelter local hotel. And anything that it may not be part of the system, it may not be part of our protocol, and yes, we do establish relationships and we do things that go beyond our comfort level. We do things that go above and beyond what we're mandated to do. In 2019, uh, we had over 100 cases reported, quoted, reported, and the mode is either by walk-ins, phone calls, referrals, resources, guidance, uh, not included as you, uh, correction, uh, guidance not included. Now the U visa, uh, we've approved in 2019, we had a total of 18 in 2019 U visa. Of the 18, we approved 17 of those. Uh, 2020, so far this year. Up to May 27th, we've had 35 cases reported as of May 27th. Again, walk-ins, phone calls, referrals, guidance, uh, as far as U visa, we've had 21 so far this year. And out of the 21, 12 have been approved and there's nine that are pending. So the approval rate is, is, is pretty much uh, 
usually about 45% uh, when they initially come in, they want help. And as soon as they're contacted, they come in, we give them all the resources. Uh, they're available uh, for the pamphlets. They go home and we never hear from them again. Uh, sometimes they do recontact and sometimes they come back. Um, and there's a lot of dynamics and reasons why they don't come back and all of you are familiar with that. And I guess the last bullet point is we, we do have additional resources. We will help them with child abuse cases was a integral part and is oftentimes a nexus between domestic violence, child abuse, and oftentimes you can't separate the, the two. And of course, it also includes rape cases and family disturbance. And we'll also sometimes go out of our protocols and our norm when the detective may have a special case, uh, that touches them for whatever reason, they will contact us and we'll do everything we can to the extent we can to help them. And that's uh, someone from who's definitely not an expert. Okay, um, Chief, bring back that presentation. I want Cynthia to do the presentation next time around. Is that possible? Uh, you know, actually she's here with me, but uh, my yeah, name was on my name was on it, and I wasn't going to ask. No, 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 that's it. fine, and that's fine. The only reason, because I have a lot of questions I want to ask uh, uh, regarding that, and I appreciate the presentation, but I definitely want to make certain that we do that because I'm going to have a lot more questions to ask about this program and how it yes, operates, sir. and and, yes, sir. and, yes, sir. Job, yes, sir. and so on and so forth, because it's a very crucial area. I, I referred the total to, uh, of two. Hold on, let me have my list here. Thirteen different individuals that I referred about well, referrals to other places and I had given that number. So I have to match up to see if these people end up contacting and what, what transpired. Uh, so let's bring that back uh, at the next the next uh, uh, next city council meeting. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Hernandez, sorry about that. Thank you, sir. Um, Chief, uh, of the hundred and so that you had for last year and the 35 for this year, um, can you explain at this time, if not, you know, if it's a Cynthia question, that's fine too. Um, can you can I ask why we do not record the number of interactions that people are asking or seeking when they come in person or over the phone? Um, because that just seems uh, could be a much larger or a smaller number or a, a number closer to 50 uh, to really understand the the requests that are being coming in uh, regarding domestic violence. Um, is there an answer for that? Yeah, she's here, and so, yes. Hi, guys, how are you? Fine, thank you. So, yes, um, there's there's a lot of reasons for that, and um, sometimes what happens is they just come in. I'm in the middle of doing, you know, working, doing something else. We're getting ready for events and all that, so I'll come, rush to the front lobby, take information, call them back, give them the information that they need. Sometimes um, officers get on my number. I call them, so when I'm... They're not coming in for an actual case. They're just coming in for resources. I don't know if that makes sense. And it does, but the question I asked was, why don't we track them in the sense of numbers? What's the I mean, rationale behind I, that? You know what? I've never really thought of, do, of doing that in the middle of that I was doing with the community relations and all that, because I kind of between the two. So, but if you guys need me to start doing that, I will. I would appreciate that because I think that shares a bigger and tells a bigger story of okay. the folks that are coming in um, you know, for service, not just the, you know, not just the ones that, you know, right. um, really do the, you know, the full sit down with you, um, but also understanding uh, a better of the landscape within our community of how many are seeking for this information um, and so forth. Because again, uh, the people that come in for initial phone calls, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you or I would know of how many of them come back at a later time for right. the okay. sit down. So that would be important as it comes to case management. Okay, and then I had also, because uh, the chief had asked me too, and I had, I had even told him that even when we're at, out on events, I get approached by different people and they just kind of want a little guidance right there and then. So I really don't even count them in because, you know, like, for example, when we do the street fair and all that, I mean, I'm there and people come and ask if, you know, if I could talk to them real quick. So even then, I don't even um, count those. I just make sure that they, when they call me, I give them all the information that they need. So, um, I mean, that's the only thing. But if you guys need me to start doing that, I will. I, I would, okay. what I'd ask is if you can just create a criteria of, well, you know, what okay. gets counted and what doesn't. 
Okay. Um, and the rationale behind it, if you do move forward with it and share it with the council and then I we'll will. go from it two weeks from now. Thank you. Okay, I will. Thank yeah, you. Let, yeah, let, let's do that because it's important for us to be able to, I'm kind of curious, do you have data as to how many people you've dealt with these past couple of months? Do, do, do you have that data available? I do actually have like a little, I have like a Excel and then every DR that I get from like, for example, this week, I, I talked to three different people, but we do, we have all that if you guys need that. Do you have it available now? Oh, no, not right now. I don't have that right now. Okay, do me a big credit. The next city company, please bring that out. And I just, I don't know how I could do the 16 people that I referred and I, three, I think I referred over. So I'm kind of curious whether it was okay. a follow through or not. Uh, okay. Some some that needed some uh, psychiatric assistance, of course, referred them to a couple of local okay. uh, that I personally know. But uh, uh, and, and of course, those that have lots of jobs and, okay. and we're involved in some domestic issues and, okay. and what have you. Let, let's okay. do that in two weeks, Cynthia. Okay, okay. sounds okay. good. I appreciate and then it. I know I know your I know that um my because I've gotten other um phone calls too from other victims that need a little bit or resources that have gave me uh, like different names from the city council that have referred them to me and and like so I know that my number does get passed out because I do get calls okay so all right so let's make sure we follow up and I think that we need to look at this data much more closer it's a very okay. crucial uh, um, and a crucial um, subject okay. that we really need to look at and 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 another thing just so you guys also know um when I mean, and I'm sure you guys already know this, but when the whole program started back then, and I think you guys are aware that that's the only thing that I was doing. So it was all I was, I mean, if you go back to the stuff, I have a bunch of different reports that I used to do, but that's only because that's all I did, just domestic violence. So within that, I'm not trying to make excuses or anything, but between doing community relations and all that, just I want you guys to kind of keep that in mind a little bit that even though I wasn't keeping numbers, I've always been able to help them out. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay, that, that, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. All Thank right. You for that. Yeah, but we could just definitely follow up with the following meeting. I don't appreciate that. Okay. And also, Chief, I want to thank you as well for the presentation, sir. I did my best. I have any yeah. That's good. <laughs> Choose the team there. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Mayor. Thank yes. You. Uh, Council Member uh, Monica Garcia. Yeah, I just want to chime in and, and let Cynthia know that, you know, it's, it is good to keep track of the information this way. It, it enables us to go after like grant monies and things like that when we can provide that kind of data. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, it, it will help your position um, because I know we've talked about like really something to keep in mind is that the domestic violence advocate is, it was funded at a part-time level. Right. And so we've never really been able to increase the capacity as far as funding. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we did, we, we made some slight increases, but not, we've never really bolstered it. Okay. And um, you and I have had this conversation just on the side too, where, you know, it, yeah, if we can keep track of that kind of data, it will allow us to go out and seek funding. Um, okay. You know, and especially right now with with this increase and what we're seeing, you know, perhaps that that is something that be, that that we can justify, right? Okay. And um, yeah, so just moving forward, maybe there's a way to to keep track of that kind of data, just so that it it allows us to grow the capacity right. of that unit because it this this position was introduced in 2009. Right. So it's now been 11 years and mm -hmm. we've never really, yes, we, we did fund it, mm -hmm. but you know, we didn't, um, we didn't really fund it at a capacity of, right. you know, I think what, what it should be. Should be right. right. I agree yeah. I completely agree with you on that one for sure. Yeah. For the need and everything. Right. Especially right. since now we're seeing the increase. So anyway, I okay. just wanted to add that. All right, thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. All right, thank you very much. We'll look forward to seeing that report the following meeting. Uh, okay. So at this point, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, one moment, please. The next. Uh, hold on, people. 
me get back to uh, oh, this is where we're, we're chatting. mayor we still have one presentation regarding the baldwin park military patch by um, yes that is correct by, the, by who is presented by the baldwin park police department oh yeah that's right chief go ahead sir thank you legal counsel so this is one of the better presentations that I actually love to do. So uh, when I got here, shortly after I got here, I think it was my first, second day, maybe a couple of days, I was approached by an officer who was wanted to develop a patch that would honor the men and women of the military. Uh, many who live here, grew up here, uh, serve all branches of our military, uh, and that includes a couple of World War II vet veterans that I was so humble uh, and honored to meet and proud and Vietnam veterans and all diverse group of people that serve the country. And, you know, for me, it's a little bit personal. My brother's a veteran, my best friend in, in, in the world since age five, who passed away at the VA's office was a veteran. And uh, we have many, many veterans at the Baldwin Park Police Department, men and women who were in the Middle East in various conflicts, different branches, who not only served their country, some in two, two tours in the Middle East, uh, and then they come back and they, they've been serving their country for years. And so when I drove around here in this community, my impression was this community, if you look at the different support our heroes that my impression is that they that they they support the military, and so I thought it was a good idea. I'm told as of a couple of days ago, and this better be right, because uh, I double and triple check it, that if you decide to develop this military military patch, and I oh my gosh I hope you got it in your box, and I apologize to the city clerk and city treasurer because I wanted to get one then, but. Truth be told, I don't have one myself. I've got a copy because uh, all they would give us was five. And so each of one of you should, I hope, have that patch that I'm talking about in front of you. We went through a lot of different revisions. There was a lot of different inputs. Um, there was a little drama. And eventually we came up with a rendition that everybody liked. And so the patch, instead of breaking down the little various branches, I thought it'd probably be a better idea to just show honor respect to the, the military, uh, United States military, the men and women, current, past, and pre present. And, and a couple of you have that history, and, and, and I honor your family and, and the work that they did and sacrifices. How do you do for anyone? So, uh, this is the patch that I'm presenting that we would, much like we do the pink patch in October, I believe. Uh, the plan would be to. Wear this for the month of November, and if you decide to do this, I'm told that we will be the first police department in the country to don this patch. That's awesome. Um, that's any do you do you have the patch? Yes, we got it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Chief, who who was the police officer that approached you with this? Oh, oh go my bad, Officer Jimenez. He's been here. 11 years, I believe. Yeah. And, um, well, Jimenez. Jimenez and there, 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 to be fair, there were a lot of people that went into the designing. My former uh, assistant, Lisa Klein, uh, she does graphic art and she, I gave her my vision. I gave her a basic outline on what I wanted to say. She came up with something I love. Then I gave it to Officer Jimenez. I met with the members of the military who are serving the country, serve the country and currently serving in Baldwin Park. I brought them in a room. I explained my vision. I showed them the patch. We got a consensus. And so after many revisions and a lot of back and forth, this is the patch that we would like to print, present to you uh, to be able to wear for the month of November to honor the men and women of the United States military. Looks nice. Like I said, I, I'm I'm told that uh, 
that if we do it, we'll be the first in the, in the United States to do this. And that in itself, I think would be an honor. It is very nice. I recall seeing the first idea, I think it was like a camouflage, but yes, this actually includes everybody, I think. It, it does, it doesn't, it doesn't put a pecking order because you know, you get in a room with Marines and you get in a room with Aaron, you know how that goes. Yes, no, that, that that's very nice. I like it. Thanks Officer Jimenez for me, please. It's beautiful. Absolutely. And everybody involved as well. It, it was a whole team and, you know, I'm sure I forgot someone and to that person out there that's, hey, my bad and I apologize and thank you so much for all the hard work. Yeah, please thank uh, Officer Juan Jimenez. He's an excellent uh, police officer. Indeed, I second that. Yeah, like I said, you know, to serve your country is, is something special and then uh, for, for a couple of tours or, and many of them, you know, various branches and various levels. <laughs> Uh, and then to come back and to serve your community for, for, you know, for years and years. I'm very proud of that, personally, myself. Awesome. Thank you very much for sharing that, Chief. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. All righty. Okay. We're going to go ahead and move on. At this point, that was the last presentation that we have. We're going to go to consent calendar. We have items one uh, through uh, six. Council members wishing to pull any items? Mayor? I'd like to pull two Excuse and five, please. Me, sorry. Hold on, hold Can on. we have public communication? Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry about that. Yes. Madam uh, City Clerk, uh, Ms. Jean M. Ayala. Go ahead. City Clerk, are you there? Is the city clerk there? Is the city clerk there? Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. I can hear you. Okay, if she's not there, we're gonna move on and then come back at the end. I am here, Mayor. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Now we can. Yes. Go yes, ahead. I need to be I need to be unmuted again. Oh, okay. Mar I need David or, or Mark to unmute me. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I'll mute her. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, give me one moment. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Uh, it is number one, it is my understanding that the Ball and Park City Council is considering suspending our community's nonprofit organizations permits to sell state approved fireworks and my family's privilege to responsibly celebrate with them this 4th of July. I am opposed to this. Other retail establishments have successfully implemented safe distribution to the general public. Why single out state approved fireworks? Why are we restricting what our family can do in the privacy of our own backyard? I understand most of the big fireworks shows, parades and festivals we are used to on the 4th of July are already canceled or postponed. Our family is staying at home this year and we should be able to celebrate our nation's birthday with the state approved fireworks. Finally, aren't we helping churches, booster clubs and other worthy causes in our city when we buy state approved fireworks from them? They need help more than ever. It is for these reasons and more that as a resident of Ball Park, I respectfully urge you to uphold our freedom to buy and, and state approved and use state approved fireworks this 4th of July respectfully submitted for the reading at this council meeting. Sincerely, Lucille Michaels. All righty. Just a minute. Thank you. Dear, uh, excuse me, it is my understanding, oops. It is my understanding that the Baldwin Park City Council is considering suspending our community's nonprofit organization's permits to sell state approved fireworks. My family's privilege to responsibly celebrate with them this 4th of July. I'm a, I am opposed to this. Other retail establishments have successfully implemented safe distribution to the general public. Why single out state approved fireworks? Why are we restricting what our family can do in the privacy of their own backyard? I understand most of the big fireworks shows, parades and festivals are, are used 
or we are used to on the 4th of July are already canceled or postponed. Our family is staying at home this year and we should be able to celebrate our nation's birthday with the state approved fireworks. Finally, aren't we helping churches, booster clubs and other worthy causes in our city when we buy state approved fireworks from them? They help, they need help now more than ever. It is for these reasons and more that as a resident of Balm Park, I respectfully urge you to uphold our freedom to buy and use state approved fireworks this 4th of July, respectfully submitted for reading at this council meeting from uh, sincerely Paul Wheelinger, Baldwin Park, California. Okay. Just a minute. Thank you. It is my understanding that the Balm Park City Council is considering suspending our community's nonprofit organization permits to sell state approved fireworks and my family's privilege to responsibly celebrate with them this 4th of July. I am opposed to this. Other retail establishments have successfully implemented safe distribution to the general public. Why single out state approved fireworks? Why are you restricting what our family okay. can do in the privacy of their own backyard? I understand most of the big fireworks shows, parades and festivals we are used to on the 4th of July are already canceled or postponed. Our family is staying at home this year and we should be able to celebrate our nation's birthday with the state approved fireworks. Finally, aren't we helping churches, booster clubs and other worthy causes in our city when we buy state approved fireworks from them? They need help now more than ever. It is for these reasons and more that as a resident of Balm Park, I respectfully urge you to uphold our freedom to buy and use state approved fireworks this 4th of July. Respectfully submitted for reading at this council meeting sincerely Paul Ramirez, Baldwin Park resident. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, just a moment. Sure. Thank you. The Azusa City Council met on May 18th to consider the question of allowing or suspending the fundraising efforts of their nonprofit groups and PGs by selling state approved safe and sane fireworks. During that discussion, the question was asked if the Los Angeles County Health Department had been contacted regarding this activity. Police Chief Mike Bertelson confirmed that he had received a communication from an LADOH representative. Below are excerpts from the communication. Police Chief Mike Bertelson, quote, I am seeking clarification related to May 13th LA County Health Order and whether or not firework sales are permitted in the county. Dr. Dickinson Diamond, the health officer, quote, the health officer order permits legal sale of fireworks as long as they follow other retail business restrictions curbside pickup, social distancing, et cetera. Further, the communication stated, quote, that the health officer order prescribes how things can be safely sold, not what persons are going to do with the goods. Persons are to abide by all laws and applicable gathering restrictions. Your NPGs and TNT fireworks have developed protocols for operating inside and outside our stands per Governor Newsom's guidelines for operating a retail establishment curbside. The copy is attached. In addition, TNT is conducting virtual training with the MPGs on all aspects of operating the stands, including these protocols. Today, more than ever, your MPGs must raise funds that your residents so desperately need. Your residents have been staying at home for over 10 weeks now. Professional display shows have been canceled throughout the co entire county. How, how will the residents celebrate our Independence Day? The safest solution is having a barbecue in their own yards with family and topping off the evening with state-approved safe and sane fireworks. On behalf of the MPGs and the TNT fireworks, we ask all of you to allow this great American tradition to continue. Thank you for your consideration and your support. Sincerely on behalf of your MPGs and TNT fireworks, Tad Trout, President. Next. Just a moment, thank you. To whom it may concern, my name is Diane Garcia, and I have been a resident of Baldwin Park for 19 years. I would like to urge council and city manager to be proactive in this time of crisis regarding the racial Black Lives Matter movement. As elected officials of, the Bald of Baldwin Park, learn from the mistakes of other cities across the nation that took too long to respond to the police brutality. Race continues to influence how police treat individuals, especially individuals of color. With all the cases of police brutality occurring over the nation, it is important that council and city manager closely review cases in which police officers are accused of acting out 
of their own racial biases. I urge you to implement strict policies for officers that would discourage any racial violence, discriminate discrimination or profiling. I would also like for a city manager to have the ability to terminate police officers that are found to be unethically using their authority, which includes but not limited to profiling, discrimination and violent acts on the basis of race. I am asking that you defund police department to only 40% of the general fund for the fiscal year 20. 2020-2021 budget. Baldwin Park being a predominantly Hispanic community has some racial biases towards other people of color that affects how African Americans are viewed and treated in our community. With the new fiscal year approaching, I am asking that you add more funding to parks and recreation and last and least, excuse me, and less to the police department. Many of the racial biases the Hispanic culture has can be eliminated by creating community spaces that embrace different cultures. Parks and recreation is able to facilitate events that are multicultural and create a better future for the Baldwin Park community. Best regards, Diane Garcia. To whom it may concern, my name is Elizabeth Garcia, and I have been a resident of Baldwin Park for 21 years. I would like to urge the council and city manager to be proactive in this time of crisis regarding the racial Black Lives Matter movement. As elected officials of Baldwin Park, please learn from the mistakes of other cities across the nation that took too long to respond to the police brutality. Race continues to influence how police treat individuals, especially individuals of color. With all the cases of police brutality occurring over the nation, it is important that the council and city manager closely review cases in which police officers are accused of acting out of their own racial biases. I urge you to implement strict policies for officers that would discourage any racial violence, discrimination or, profi or profiling. I would also like for the city manager to have the ability to terminate police officers that are found to be unethically using their authority, which includes but not limited to profiling, discrimination and violent acts on the basis of race. I am asking that you defund the police department to only 40% of the general fund for the fiscal year 2020. 2021 budget. Baldwin Park, being a predominantly Hispanic community, has some racial biases towards other people of color that affects how Black Americans are viewed and treated in our community. With the new fiscal year approaching, I am asking that you add more funding to parks and recreation and less to the police department. Many of the racial biases the Hispanic culture has has can be eliminated by creating community spaces that embrace different cultures. Parks and Recreation is able to facilitate events that are multicultural and create a better future for the Baldwin Park community. Best regards, Elizabeth Garcia. Next. <clears throat> this is from Javier Navarro, Baldwin Park resident for 37 years. Good evening, council members. I have two comments. Number one, the 99 cent store only is not allowing customers to bring into the store their reusable bags. There are signs throughout the store that reads, attention customers reusable bags in accordance with the new county order. We kindly ask that you do not bring your reusable bags from home. New reusable plastic bags are available for purchase. Mm -hmm. This complies with the county's additional requirement to minimize the spread of coronavirus and support the health and safety of our associates. If this is really a county order, why is the city not enforcing this on the rest of the stores and supermarkets? And if it's not true, the 99 cent store should not be allowed to post something that is not true just to sell more bags. Number two, when the new electronic marquee going up, well, excuse me, when is the new electronic marquee going up at Morgan Park? There's a question I've been asking myself since the old marquee was taken down 70 days ago. Why was the old marquee taken down without having the new one ready to be put up in its place? Place. 70 days and counting that the old sign would still be in use. Food drives, COVID-19 testing, stay-at-home curfew, et cetera, et cetera. Next. Good afternoon. I've been a resident of Baldwin Park for the last 21 years. As a review, as I review the budgets for the past few fiscal years, I've noticed an upward trend dedicated to the police department. This is disgraceful to see and know that it is what our money is going for. How is the police department funded significantly higher than our schools? Baldwin Park consists predominantly of minorities, and I think we all agree that this is correct. Why are funds directed to the police department who continuously show 
uh, to abuse their power while our schools are underfunded in comparison. Education is pivotal for upward social mobility. I understand that there may be different funds to different things, but these are grievances that our community has had for years, meaning that nothing has been done to address it. The change needs to happen, so it is to your best interest as public officials to represent, represent the community, not your interests or the interests of the executive branch. If you continue to get reelected, it could be because of various reasons. So don't think that a quote adequate budget is the reason you got reelected. This is a scary misperception from the mayor's part. It is also important that we talk about the issues around us right now. I call for the mayor and every representative in this council to speak up on the issue that matter to minorities and go beyond speaking and act on what we can do to support the members of our community. We need to hold our city accountable for this. It is the representatives of our community's sole responsibility to be the voice of the members of our city. As you know, many of us have been demanding that we significantly reduce the budget set to the police department. Inform us, excuse me, inform us <clears throat> when this voting occurs, tell us what the various things you look at to fit the criteria of how much money you allocate to the police department are. While you have your own personal beliefs about this issue, we need to know what your criteria is to fund the police department and why you prioritize that department instead of other departments, groups, institutions, such as our public schools. It is important that we know because we are members of the city and we are the ones who face the consequences of the budgets that are allocated. Um, this is by Lisbeth Ramos and in conjunction with Marco A. Ramos. Next. Thank you. Just a minute. I have, I have two more, I believe. Uh, number one, it states in the Baldwin Park webpage that Baldwin Park Patrol Bureau has the largest and most visible police department, and they are split up into two 12.5 hour shifts. But in the last couple of weeks, there have been little police presence. Two, the police department is given 64% of funds according to the adopted budget, all funds fiscal year 2019-2020. How are these resources being used in regards to trespassing and theft in the community? And what is the police response in regards to these matters? Three, on Saturday, 5.30, 2020, I witnessed a trespassing and possibly robbery in my neighborhood. I called the Baldwin Park Police Department where they informed me that they would be sending a patrol officer. I called the department pack when I saw a new patrol arrived and a dispatcher said, and a dispatcher, excuse me, department pack, dispatcher said that they would be send someone over and that I would receive a call back in regards to this matter. It is now 6-3-20 and I have yet to receive a call back in the ballpark web page a message from police chief states, quote, public safety is our priority. We want to ensure the city of Baldwin Park is a safe place to live, work and play. He also states we must accomplish this as a team and that includes the community. Four, so how exactly are we a team when the Baldwin Park Police Department does not show up to protect the community it serves? Can you please confirm oh, and that we did receive it? And this is by Myra Vargas. Thank you. And Next. Thank you. Next. It says, I would like this to be read during open public forum in its entirety and then a, given each council member a copy uh, and mayor. Thank you. Um, sorry, I will attach of photos and paperwork. Um, I am requesting, I am requesting access to records in possession or control of the Baldwin Park Police Department, Baldwin Park Human Resources Department for the purposes of inspection and copying pursuant to the California Public Records Act, California Government Code Section 6250, CPRA and Article 13B of the California Constitution. The specific records I seek to inspect and copy are listed below as used here in record includes public records and writings as those terms are defined at government code 6252E and G. I request access to inspect copies of any communication not limited to emails, phone records, internal memos, notes, summaries, reports that correspond and are related to the promotional test created by Baldwin Park Police 
Chief uh, Steve McLean, Laura Thomas, Vivian Robles, and or any Baldwin Park HR department employee and CPS consulting and or any other testing service company hired by any Baldwin Park employee that has communicated with the listed city of Baldwin Park employees during Chief McLean's tenure, approximately from December 9, 2019 through June 3, 2020. If you contend that any portion of the records request is exempt from disclosure by express provisions of law, government code section 6253A requires segregation and reduction of that material in order that the remainder of the records may be released. If you contend that any express provision of laws exists to exempt from disclosure all or a portion of the records I have requested, government code section 6253C requires that you notify me of the reasons for the determination determination not later than 10 days from your receipt of this request. Government Code Section 6253D and 6255B require that any response to this request that includes a determination that the request is denied in whole or in part must be in writing and include the name and title of the person or persons responsible for the city's response. Government Code Section 6253D prohibits the use of a 10-day period or any provisions of the CPRA or any other law to delay, quote, to delay quote, access for purposes of inspecting public records. In responding to this request, please keep in mind that Article 1, 3B2 of the California Constitution expressly requires you to broadly construe all provisions that further the public's right of access and to apply any limitations on access as narrowly as possible. If I can provide any clarification that will help exp expedite your attention to my request, please contact me and it includes an email pursuant to government code 6253-1. I ask that you notify me of any duplication costs exceeding $50 before you duplicate the records so that I may decide which records I want copied. Thank you for your timely attention to this matter. Sincerely, Melinda Garcia. And I have, <clears throat> excuse me, one more. Thank you. Um, this statement is uh, to be read and please be sure the statement is forwarded to its, each council member in its entirety. Honorable Mayor and Council, we want to inform you of what has occurred to our police department since the arrival of Chief Stephen McLean. When Chief McLean arrived, he stated that his integrity could not be challenged. We, the unnamed employees of the Ballin Park Police Department, have borne witness to substantial actions by the Chief of Police that call into question his character and ethics. We are voicing our concerns because we believe that leaders of the police organizations should be held to, at the very least, the same standard as the officers they lead, if not higher. All the unprofessional and ethical actions of our current Chief McLean has taken, as described in detail herein, not only questions his integrity and professionalism, but also describes how he has also tainted the very professional police department in which many of us have served with honor. Chief McLean actively endorses aggressive police tactics. Use of force incidences are at an all-time high. In the first days of his tenure, McLean went into several briefings and advocated for aggressive policing in subtle coded words. He showed us his awards, plaques, and trophies that he claimed were earned for his aggressive tactics. One of the plaques he boasted about was a boot and a helmet plaque and trophy he received from his time at the East LA Sheriff's Station. Those of us who are police officers and those of us from East LA know that the LASD deputy gang, the Bandidos, used that boot and helmet as their logo, meaning boots to the head. Here's a picture of the gang's Ford Apache logo, which you can compare with the trophy as he has prominently displayed in McLean's office. Here's the link to the website of the article in which Sheriff McDonald defends his decision to outline the logo and the link where the LSD, LASD Inspector General explains the bandidos click and their logo. Thus his cavalier attitude in favor of abusive tactics creates an environment where actions are condoned. In fact, as a direct result, use of force incidences in our PD are at the highest that they have ever been under other police chiefs' tenures. Evidence that McLean corrupted the promotion process to favor a selected few. In another example, McLean's favorable treatment of some and the desperate, disparate treatment of others in the department. McLean provided everyone with the CD with study material. He asked officers to come into his office and said he would answer any questions we may have. Some of us that could meet with McLean asked him about the promotional test and what we should study. Some of us were advised to study specific topics such as policy, MOU, and Title 15 jail info, et cetera. Others, however, were not provided with any information whatsoever. Despite this, McLean assigned 
excuse me, assured us, guaranteed us that everyone had the same information in that CD. The fact is that he shared more specific and detailed test notes with certain police officers and promised them positions like our POA president and vice president, along with others for sergeants and lieutenants. We have pictures of those notes to prove this. Given the fact that the city has defined a promotional test precisely to ensure equality, this is clearly a violation and anti-ethical to it to what this test was meant to accomplish. Not only is this demoralizing, unfair, and corrupt, on top of the ethical concerns underlying the actions described herein, the potential legal exposure on the various grounds, including on the basis of favoritism or disparate treatment can rightfully be alleged by the officers that are not part of the quote favored cohort and can and will no longer be ignored. Another is example of McLean's unethical behavior occurred when he told certain people that it was okay to study while on duty. Some took his advice and have studied on duty while others questioned the blatantly unethical authorization and did not feel comfortable doing so. Coincidentally, that is how some of us found the notes as those favored officers left their notes in plain view. While others walked around with the notebook and tabs on the subject material, he directed them to study. Enclosed are the pictures of the notes some of the officers were given by Chief McLean in an investigation is undertaken, you should be able to easily identify the officers that Chief McLean gave those detailed notes. Those were selected as the chosen ones. These officers, those officers should also be investigated as well as they saw corruption and allowed it to occur for their benefit. If there is any doubt about whether he pro provided those officers specific subject material, check with the HR department as they already have access to the test for purpose of review and comparison. We also have anonymous sources that can verify in court under penalty of perjury that the test material given by McLean matches the notes almost verbatim from the current available test. We also know which company he used and can verify they created a test for the Baum Park Police Department with the same subject material he gave to those officers, thus attempts to ignore this issue. Like the contents of this letter puts the city on notice that cannot, that cannot simply be ignored or easily concealed. Additionally, enclosed a public records request for any communication between the testing company, Chief McLean, and or the HR department in case this plea is ignored. Chief McLean perpetuates the department's discriminatory, corrupt, and unlawful actions, exposing the city to potential legal action. During COVID testing, a few stakeholders warned McLean about the history of the per promotional testing and the Baum Park Police Department discriminatory practices. He then left and commented to an officer, quote, I'm going to give a test and choose who I want. Steve McLean is going to choose who he wants. By way of example, he placed the sergeant in an acting captain position in violation of personnel rules 4.4 acting capacity, despite being informed that doing so violated applicable policy. Chief McLean said he quote, needed a Caucasian on the team and that our permanent Lieutenant was not the one he wanted because he deemed him untrustworthy. The sergeant in question knew that the chief was violating policy, yet he and McLean thought of themselves and not the department. McLean knowingly violated personnel rules and once again exposed the police department to unnecessary risk. Not only does this exemplify his lack of proper decision-making and lack of true leadership, but more troubling is that he fosters corruption and discriminatory behavior. Chief McLean also attempted to place a supervisor in an undesirable assignment assignment as an evidence tech as punishment, even though he knew and was informed that it was wrong. When certain officers warned him it would open the city to liability, McLean told the officers that those that warned him about his actions were not trustworthy or part of the coach's team. He added, quote, the train is moving and they better be on it. Nevertheless, be grudgingly, he moved the supervisor to another shift, which is an uncommon practice and clearly punitive. In another incident, he did demanded that a victimized officer seek arbitration with another officer in order to avoid an internal investigation as it would quote, look very, it would look bad. When the victimized officer refused, he instructed the acting captain to continue to badger and demand arbitration. The chief ex explicitly stated, quote, it would look bad on me, evidencing that he was only looking out for his self-interest. The victimized officer pleaded with the acting captain to leave him alone and to continue the investigation. The acting captain Captain told the victimized officer that Chief McLean ordered him to insist on arbitration, even though the acting captain knew it was wrong and that he was just following orders. Feeling scared and without pr protection, the victimized officer warned the acting captain that if the harassment did not stop, he would seek legal counsel. McLean was warned about the officer's potential legal action, but McLean ignored it and lashed out on the officers who advised him as such, seeing no other option and having been told that the chief was strong arming him into arbitration, the victimized officer has now hired legal counsel, a lawsuit, and any potential monetary loss could be have been avoided had McLean not put his ego and his 
career interest ahead of the police department and the city. You are on notice the PD and the city should be spared of further exposure directly attributable to McLean, allowing this police chief to continue to sully our badge and continue his harassing and unethical practices opens the door to liability. Doing nothing after being put on notice of such actions, behavior and practices constitutes your tacit endorsement. There have been numerous pleadings by us to correct our police leadership behavior and that of the rogue police in the past. They have been past investigations in which the city has minimized or swept the results under the rug. Results that have proven correct about the bullying, cronyism, and discrimination in the Ballpark Police Department, which any attorney or concerned citizen can request. We have been convinced by well-meaning officers to work within, but nothing has happened and the same corruption continues to occur and appears to be getting worse. We care about our police department and the community we serve as this is our hometown and many of us from the surrounding communities. We will not allow our rights to be violated any longer. We will not allow the good will we have developed with our community over the years to be undone due to one man's ego. We will not allow the little progress that has been made in the department to be unwound because the department's quote leader uses us as pawns in his own personal goals without regard to his duties and responsibility to the city and its community. Over and over, the political body has minimized our grievances and even recently instructed us to grieve the process with the same people who are part of the corruption. Sadly, that same political body will no longer take our calls after a few of us began to communicate our grievances. I guess our grievances were too overwhelming. This cannot continue. We are tired. This is a formal notice to you regarding not only the unfair testing pro process, but also Chief McLean's unethical and unlawful behavior. This goes beyond cheating on the test. It does not take much to consider the potential repercussions within the department and in the community of the havoc that Chief's reign has already wrecked. Rest assured, however, that at this point, the situation can be ameliorated. However, this cannot be rectified by an inconsequential censure of the chief. What change would that bring about? What would happen to us next? The toxicity that has infiltrated the department must be removed or it will only spread. The chief must be removed. The people of Ballin Park deserve better. I hope you believe and see that if this is not re remediated, then to answer a question, a council member's uh, assertion, when grievances were previously brought up in the past, she belittled us by saying, quote, in order to be believed, people should sue. Our answer is please stand by. Roberto Pelad, Augusto Volmer, Thomas Rapido, Samuel Battle, Joseph Romero, Fred Lau, and the rest of the St. Patrick's Brigade. And that's the end of the public comments. All right, let me just make a comment of the last uh, statement that you, excuse me, that you just read. That involves personnel uh, issues, so we'll have to leave that at, at that and uh, no discussions publicly because that does involve uh, internal matters. That's my um, legal counsel. I agree with you, Mayor, that uh, many of the issues that are raised are personnel issues. In addition, some of the issues that are raised are currently under investigation. So I would suggest that uh, the council, uh, uh, if they would like to discuss this, that they would do that in closed session. That's fine. That, that we could do that uh, at, a, at a closed session. We want to go more in debt into that. Just want to, of course, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. Mayor. Um, yes. Yes. Okay, it's Monica Garcia. It's you fun. probably, you, it's probably hard to just uh, to distinguish between me and Alejandra. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so, I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, I just wanted to say that you know, w when there's any, when there's any personnel matter that comes before us or you know to us. Um, it should absolutely go first to the human resources uh, d department within our city. And, you know, it should be a briefing that comes from Laura to the city council along with our CEO. That's typically our protocol. So, you know, I don't want to, uh, to, to suggest that, you know, this isn't taken serious. I'm just saying whenever there is a personnel matter, it should be submitted to the human resources department and then brought to the city council um, just so that there's a fair process. Uh, and you know, it's, it's per the, the city's protocols and the bargaining unit uh, protocols and so on and so forth. So I, I mean, I, I agree with you and obviously with our general counsel that you know, this is an item that will be taken up. Uh, with, with human resources in our in our labor department. 
Okay. Any, any... And, and Mayor, if I may, for just a moment, I, w I would like to uh, say that uh, Council Member Garcia is correct. And in fact, every employee has a duty uh, to report to the Human Resources Department whenever they find out about violations of city policy, discrimination, retaliation, harassment, any of those kinds of things. They have a duty, every employee at the city, when they know about those things, to report them to the Human Resources Department. All righty. Well, no. Mayor? Yes. Uh, come, Alejandra. This is Alejandra now. Yes. Um, I, first of all, I want to thank all, all the people that send in uh, their comments. Um, thank you, Ms. Ayala, for reading them all. Um, I do have a question or um, in regard to Ms. Maria Vargas, um, very concerning her comments about the response time of the police when she called about a breaking in. Um, I would like for you to look into that to see. I, I know uh, calls are prioritized depending on what's going on, but I, I think a breaking in, you can't really tell. I mean, what can happen from there? I would think that's a pr priority. I'm not the police department again, but if somebody's breaking in my house and I call the police department, I would think I would need somebody there immediately because I fear for my life. So I really would like that look into, um, if you can get back to me on what happened that day and why it took them so long to respond and why she did not get a, a call back as promised, please. Thank you. All right, anyone else? And Mayor, if I may, for just a moment, because there were so many public communication emails uh, it can be easy sometimes for one of those to uh, be missed. So if there's anybody in the public that submitted a public rec a public communication request and it was not read into the record, uh, please email our city clerk and let her know right away so that that can be read in before the meeting's over. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I'm and again, if I, I added it at the previous meeting, if we can add uh, Ms. Lulu on there, that way they both have the message because I know Ms. Ayala had trouble getting on board with the system and that can happen to any one of us. So that way at least two different people have the messages in case one of them is not available to read it. I think that would be beneficial to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Ms. Alejandra Avila. And also, also Mar um, Monica Garcia. Um, that there is a lot, and I know there's a records act there, so we could follow through that. Uh, there was individuals that talked about the five words uh, that concerned uh, the amount of uh, funds that goes into the police department. And some of those were asked uh, prior to the closing of the, uh, the closed session, so we uh, will hopefully have some graphs and place that in, in our website, and as well as sending out to the community in general as well. All righty. Mayor? Okay, thank you. Um, in addition to the items that I requested earlier, so when we had our special session and some of these, uh, some of these residents and um, some of these individuals submitted their comments, uh, I asked that we provide, you know, information, um, and I was very specific about those the four items. But um, I just wanted to mention that in addition to bringing that information back and, and, you know, just wanting to be as transparent and responsive to some of the concerns and some of the comments that we're receiving. I also want our chief uh, at the next meeting and especially at the time that we pass the budget, uh, I would like him to provide a statement to the community on how the police department is responding to you know the events that we're experiencing right now um, with the Black Lives Matter and you know the, the George Floyd um, murder. And uh, I know that this earlier today we were all present, including the chief. Uh, we were all present at a at a protest at City Hall that was very peaceful and included uh, church leaders and, and local churches, uh, members of the churches. And uh, we all gathered to, to pray for, you know, the events that are happening. Um, and I think it's just an appropriate time for us to respond to some of the concerns from the community and also to express, you know, our solidarity um, and our, our shared concerns where, 
you know, where it, it it's applicable. And uh, so I don't want, I, I certainly don't want to see like an us against them. I think that the city um, in being present today at the protests, uh, yeah, I know that you were there, Mayor, um, all council members uh, were there along with the chief of police and some police officers. I think that we do want to uh, express our solidarity with what's happening. And so, like I said, in addition to the, the request that I made earlier about budget and um, you know some of the jurisdiction and all that, I would like the chief to, to make a comment at the next meeting and, um, and just to move things along, you know, we don't have to do that today, but at the next meeting, um, just to have that for, for our community, just to let them uh, rest assured that, that a lot of their concerns are our concerns and the progress that we've made uh, you know, over the years. I know since I've been a council member, it has been a priority to make sure that our department is, um, you know, developing positive rapport, positive relationships with our community. And we, you know, trying to do that in, in different ways. And so I just, I, I want to hear from our police department, you know, on, on where we are in this moment and, um, give the chief the opportunity to respond to to some of these events that are happening in in the U.S. and, and how in our, our small city of Baldwin Park, you know, how we um, are also responding. So anyway, just wanted to share that. Yeah, not, thank you very much, Councilmember Monica. I got to say, and I'll also share this afternoon. Uh, it, of course, we were there this morning. I was disappointed that the chief was prevented from being up in the circle, which I did not know until later in the afternoon when I brought up the subject. Uh, I personally believe that was wrong uh, for that person to have said, you know, uh, asked that he not stay there. I mean, it is it does it does involve law enforcement, and we can't put the law enforcement agency behind. I think that was wrong. And uh, had I known prior, I would have said something. But uh, that just just for for the record, uh, that's all I have to say. All right, so anyone else has anything to say or share? Uh, Mayor. Yes. Um, yes, uh, back to the comment that you made about um, the police not being invited. I I see the meaning behind it, but at the same time, it, it, it doesn't show unity between the police and the community. And like Monica said, the police department works very well with our community. They have been working for years to make sure that they're out there providing services, uh, doing different events for our community. I, I wasn't happy with the division of the police department and the community today as well. I, I did talk to uh, one of the leaders and I told them I wanted to have a further conversation about that because to me, the idea was to show that the police department and the city is united because we're all feeling the pain. We are dealing with it in different ways. I am definitely united with the cause. If it wasn't because of COVID, I would be out there marching with them every single day. However, you know, there's certain things, of course, that I would not do, but I am definitely with them. The cause is that police brutality does need to stop but it doesn't mean every single police officer does that. It doesn't mean every single police officer is bad. We have a lot of good police officers um, in the family, in a community with our friends. And it's difficult for me when I hear them pointing the finger at every single police officer, and that's not fair. And I completely agree. That should not have been a division today. We should not have been divided, the community from the police department. So we definitely need to continue working on that. I think emotions are, are very high right now. So more than anything, we need to continue working with the community to, to make them see that we are with them. The police department is with them, that that, that is our goal to work with the community and that we are making sure that, that those type of events are not happening within our city and that we do, if we do find out something is happening that it's definitely addressed. And if, if there's something that we don't know about, like they said earlier in the meeting, you need to notify HR and we need to make sure there's a follow-up because we need to work together. We need to protect 
our community as well as our police department. So I do thank all of those that were there and were peaceful um, because it was very nice and I wish more of, of those protests were peaceful like that. But I didn't like the fact that we were divided from our police department. We need to unite. We need to make sure our community knows that our police is united because they, they do try to include themselves in all the activities and events for them. Thank you, Mayor. Well, thank you very much. And I just want to share, Alejandra uh, also mentioned something uh, this morning, which I thought was, it was good. You know, that, you know, the, you mentioned something about the officers that we have that a vast majority are good. And then in between them, you mentioned something that there are those maybe that we also question. That's why it's important for us now uh, to look at this as well, Chief, and, and to make certain that we are addressing those individuals that are abusing the badge. The badge, as we know, carries a lot of power and more so in a Latino community where it has a tendency of having uh, uh, that, that, that tension. But I think that overall in Baldwin Park, we have overcome that. Maybe not 100%, but we need to make certain and assure that those officers, without me getting into the confidentiality, that, that, are, that, are, that may be or in the future under some type of investigation that we take immediate action and that maybe they shouldn't be a part of the police department because we will not accept any type of abuse. And that, that, is, that is a concerted uh, effort. But I know overall, because I know of a large portion, I would say that the vast majority are good officers, that in between them, there may be those. Uh, no different than what happened to uh, Mr. George Floyd. I mean, you had the total of what, I believe it was four officers looking at this guy while this man had his knee with and his hands in his pocket. And we all witnessed live and in color this man, you know, saying, I can't breathe, then eventually took his last breath in front of national television and just died right there. I mean, so it's important for us to make certain that we send a very clear message across the board that the expectation of this of the of, of the ballpark police department, which is owned by the residents, the taxpayers, that we expect them to continue the professional job that they have led, and that if in between them they see something similar to this, it has to be reported because that's why you wear the the badge, and 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 the residents expect that every police officer is above board. And it's very important for us to send that message, Chief. Okay. Mr. So, Mayor. Yes, yes, uh, Council Member, Vice Mayor uh, Hernandez, sir. Thank you. Um, I just wanna to speak to this point or a few points, you know, all of you, you know, all of my colleagues, um, I'm very proud of, you know, each and every one of you, um, especially for your viewpoints and your support of not only the community, but also those in the law enforcement community, um, because, you know, they are the ones that do respond uh, to those 911 calls when we need them at our most critical times. Uh, but with that said, um, you know, we do live in a country uh, that has structured inequalities. Um, you know, the COVID-19 has certainly uh, demonstrated that for our communities of color here in Los Angeles, in Los Angeles. Um, so I certainly understand the frustration of, you know, of our brothers and sisters, you know, of, from the African Americans to the Latino communities and all the other minorities um, that do sometimes feel and do experience, uh, you know, uh, life-changing uh, alterations in their lives uh, because of the color of their skin. And, you know, as I said to other folks in the past and as I just said to folks today, um, for those that are protesting, you know, I just want to say I, I hear you, I feel you, and I support you. And, you know, over the course of time that I've been here on city council, uh, I've made it very clear, uh, you know, that diversity uh, and having a police department that's made up of our, of our brothers and sisters uh, and as a reflection of our community makes it much stronger. Um, you know, I do plan on, you know, working with the chief and each and every one of you to kind of go through our policies and procedures, um, you know, so it's very transparent for individuals to understand uh, you know, some of these decisions that sometimes, uh, you know, our police officers have to make in a critical moment. Uh, you know, I am not, you know, without a doubt what happened, uh, you know, last Monday, that was murder. Um, and finally, as of today, you know, we're finally beginning to have justice when each of them are now being prosecuted for that. Uh, 
uh, that's one small step. But you know, if we continue to just talk and take no action, um, I think that makes you know very little difference in our community. Um, so that's why you know, as I as I've spoken to this in the past, you know, in order to change things, is we have to open things up and be more transparent so people truly understand. Uh, what it is that we do and what it is that they do for us in our communities. And I think through that dialogue and conversation, uh, you know, we can begin to move forward uh, together um, in a peaceful and hopefully a productive conversation. So thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, please thank the officers as well. The chief, I think that today was, uh, was, was wrong. Uh, the officers should have all been up at that circle and the fountain as well. Thank you. And, and, and by the way, Chief, thank you very much. And thank the, you and the officers that were out there that knelt down during that eight, eight, eight minute uh, uh, session that uh, Father Mike had requested as well. Uh, before I move on, also, Chief, I want to acknowledge you because you have done um, a good job in uh, the recruitment of uh, Asians in our, in our community, African Americans. And, and that's important because it, it builds on to this community. Uh, regardless whether it's the vast majority of Latinos, there's a lot of people in between and we need to recognize that and it's important for us to move in that direction. Thank you. You're, right. you're, wel you're welcome, Aaron. Uh, you know, my statement is, Mr. Mayor, Mr. City Attorney, Mr. Hernandez, Mr. CEO, I'll see you in court. The corruption stops tonight and we'll talk soon because I'm not feeling too well. So I'll see you in court, Mr. Mayor. Your time's up. Okay. Thank you very much. Don't know what that's about, but that's fine. All righty. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and move on. We'll discuss that after. Legal counsel, did we catch that? Yes, I did catch that. I, I, I don't know quite what that was either, but I did catch it. Neither do I. Okay. All right. So moving along, let's go ahead and move on with the, uh, with the actual... Um, with the agenda, so we have uh, items uh, um, from one uh, to, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, sorry about that. All right, we have uh, uh, items from one through, uh, oh, I have the wrong one. Hold on, people, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I'll be right with you. Here you go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move to uh, consent calendars, items one uh, through number eight. Any council members wishing to pull any item? I'd like to pull item two and five, please. So hold on. Let me just get my page. Two and five. All righty. Two and five. All right. Uh, Councilman Alejandro Avila has pulled items uh, two and five. Council members, if no one else is uh, waiting to pull any items, I'll go ahead and move. Consent comments with the exception of two and five. That is my motion. Is there... Is, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, second by Council Member Monica Garcia. At this point, any objection? See none, so move. All right, so the minutes item two uh, requested by Council Member, Mon uh, excuse me, Alejandra Avila. Uh, <laughs> uh, Council Member Alejandra. Okay, I would like to bring item two back. I would like to request um, to uh, for Item two for the meeting of May 6 on item 12. If we can add more e details to those, to the minutes for May 6 uh, for the regular meeting, let me be clear. And then if we can bring that back for approval after those um, items are added, please. And that is my motion to bring it back right. with uh, more details. Okay, is there a, I'll second? Second. I'll second by Vice Mayor uh, Hernandez and, and no objections. Thank you. All right, so we'll go to item number uh, five, which is the approved resolution number 2020-022 and resolution number 2020-024 to deny the industrial disability retirement uh, claims for Joseph P. Meister and, the, and excuse me, delegate uh, authority to chief executive officer or his or her designee. So at this point, uh, council member Alejandra Vila. Yes, I just have a question on this. Um, I know I've been a council member for a short time but I, I've seen these items come up and they have been approved. Um, as a city clerk, I've seen many of them come up just like this one and they have been approved. So I'm curious, uh, why is this one being treated different than the previous ones? I, I understand what it's about, but normally they just get approved, but this one is not getting approved. 
Is there a difference? Why is it not being recommended? Hello? Shannon? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Yes. It's, it's just that I, I, I see that if they always get approved and then this one is just not getting approved. Is there, what, what is the difference between this one and the previous ones? Uh, Laura, if you're available to answer that question, um, I know we do need to be careful on this. We can't talk about any medical issues. Um, if it gets any further, we might have to bring it back in closed session unless, um, Laura, you have an easy, quick answer. Yes, I, I can answer the question. Uh, good evening, Marin and council members. Um, typically for the IDR request that have to be sent to CalPERS, if the, if the officer has a, has a disability and it's confirmed through our our third party administrator, then we will recommend approval of an IDR. In this case, with uh, Mr. Meister, there was no evidence through our third party administrator that this mm -hmm. officer had a disability. And that's, this is why we are denying the IDR. Okay, so what's evidence that was given to you? Okay. Correct. I just wanted to get clarification because like I said, I always see them go through. And since I had not discussed this with anybody or was not aware of it, I needed to know why the reason behind it. And I know we can get uh, into detail of the evidence because of confidentiality. Okay, thank you. Yes, you're welcome. All right. Okay. Right. Okay, we can, I can go ahead and make a motion to approve. Okay, there is a motion to approve. I'll second. Any objections? See none, so we'll move. Thank you, Laura. It's nice to hear your voice. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> All righty. So at this point, we'll go ahead and go over to the public hearing. Um, so we have, um, we have the public hearing. The first one we have is a request to the city, to the city council from Planning Commission on the amendment to City of Ball Parks Municipal Code Chapter 153.150 of Street Parking and Loading uh, Regulations, Section 153, uh, Parking Development Dimensions and Location, pursuant to Section 153.210, Part 15 of the City Municipal Code, Location Citywide Applicant, City of Baldwin Park. Okay, who is handling this? Uh, Mayor uh, Ben Martinez and um, Ron yes. uh, Garcia are here to answer any questions. They can give a brief presentation. Uh, basically, we're, we're adjusting our parking standards and the space size uh, to make it a little easier for uh, developments within the city and to be more consistent with the dimensions uh, of the cities around us. All right. Okay. Go, go, Shannon? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, so at this point, I'll go ahead and make a, a motion unless uh, someone else has any questions. I'll uh, move for the uh, ordinance uh, 1453 entitled an ordinance of the city of Baldwin Park, California, amending chapter 153.150 section of the city municipal code relating to parking development uh, dimensions and location. So that is my motion. R really quick. Uh, dimensions, are, are the dimensions going to be greater or smaller in our city now? Reduced. Correct. They're, they're, correct. They're slightly smaller. Our, our standards mm -hmm. um, are a little bit larger than normal. Um, mm -hmm. Ben or Ron can give us those exact dimensions, uh, but they're reducing just a little bit. That allows the developers to get in additional spaces, um, which makes it easier for them to develop, um, you know, retail or restaurant space. Hmm. I, I'm a little, I don't know. I would have to see how much smaller it is. It going to be for for smaller? I, I don't know. I, Ron, I'm, if yes. you could address the uh, exact dimensions, those changes, if you could discuss that briefly, or Ben. Yes, absolutely. Um, good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor, City Council, Councilmember Avila. Uh, good, good question. Evening. So the current parking standards. When I first came on board to the city, that was one of the first things that I noticed that was an impediment for development within the city. Um, and the current parking standards in Baldwin Park is 10 by 20, um, mm -hmm. and which is significantly larger. 
than the surrounding parking space, what the standard parking space uh, is required in the surrounding cities, uh, which would be, which our recommendation would be in line with the surrounding cities at eight and a half with the, with the flexibility of doing an eight and a half or nine foot wide by 18 in depth. So just to give you a, a perspective, that parking stall width is what's in the park in the city hall parking structure. The 10 by 20? No, that is a eight and a half. Uh, that is a nine by 18. By 18. Oh, uh, okay. So uh, as we were developing the, the code amendment, I made a note that we would have to address this um, uh, uh, as a code amendment because uh, as development was coming through the city, it was becoming an impediment and meeting uh, the parking requirements. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And but I the can... parking structure is it's actually a good size. Yeah. So even, even I structure... can park there without hitting anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So in addition to what Ron has mentioned, um, you know, since I've been with the city, I have also heard, you know, quite a quite a um, a lot of complaints from developers, business owners, uh, because when they're trying to expand their businesses, um, no and, you know, when they go work in other cities, they, they find out our standards are, are very and overly restrictive. Got it. Makes sense. Thank you. I do. I have a question, Shannon sure. and Ron. Uh, so what cities would you say in that are surrounding us that have can you give me a list of the cities oh. that have these dimensions? Yeah, I think oh. Ron has that. I think he so studied in the staff those. Report, in, the, in the staff report, um, I've, I've, uh, we did a, a, a survey. And so, for example, like City of Duarte, Covina, West Covina, Azusa, Monrovia, Arcadia, El Monte, Rosemead, San Dimas, uh, and Irwindale, um, they average half nine by 18. So this would bring us in line with what the standard parking requirement is. Um, and also just to give you another perspective, in doing research in this code amendment, I found that in previous, uh, previous to my time coming to Baldwin Park, that, um, that there were except uh, uh, variances requested essentially from that parking requirement. And to give you a, a perfect example is uh, the LA Fitness, the way that was proposed, they needed a, a, a reduction in the parking stall size. Otherwise, they would not have been able to meet the parking requirements. So those parking spaces that are out there are, uh, are between eight and a half, uh, nine by 18 and not 10 by 20. The only a few, a very few, a handful of parking spaces were placed at a 10 by 20. And so if we were to apply that today, they would not be able to meet the parking requirements. Um, and additionally, uh, the uh, shopping center that's located that in, that uh, where the target center is located, that's a, that's under a, a specific plan. And uh, when Raising Canes first came in, and knowing that uh, this parking requirement, I was really you know I was like knowing the that the code requires a ten by twenty, I was uh what I was just amazed at how they were gonna meet that requirement. So in further researching that, I found that that specific plan requires eight and a half by 18 parking stalls, not 10 by 20. And so to bring some consistency and parking stall size throughout the city, it makes sense to, to, to line up uh, a, a, uh, a parking standard that is uniform. Uh, uh, so that way there isn't a, you know, a 10 by 20, nine by 18 here, and so on. And then if not, what we're going to continue to see is requests for exceptions. So um, I hope I hope that answers uh, uh, your question. All right. Does that's, that, okay, that's all right. Okay, so that's very good. <laughs> and, and all the other cities, I mean, I, I go into West Covina, Duarte, all those areas, Monrovia, and their parking is fine. I, I don't have a problem. And, and just comparing it to the parking structure, it gives me a clear picture. So I, yeah. I don't have a problem with it at all. All righty. So at this point, uh, all right. So we'll do that. I want to uh, thank you very much. And there was a motion second. And however, I will open up the public hearing uh, for anyone wishing to speak. So Madam City Clerk, did we receive any, uh, anyone uh, that wanted to hear in favor of this public hearing? Madam City Clerk? 
No, no comments, Mayor. No comments. So at this point, I'll open up for anyone opposing. Did we get anyone that opposes, Madam City Clerk? No comments. Okay, no comments whatsoever. So at this point, there was a motion seconded. Any objections? See none, so move. The second uh, public hearing that we have is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Baldwin Park. Mr. Mayor, you need to close that first public hearing, please. Yes. Okay. You're right. All right, at this point, move uh, to close the public hearing. That's my motion. Second. Seconded by uh, Councilman Alejandro Avila. Any objections? See none, so move. Thank you, Legal Council. Next one, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Baldwin Park confirming the advisory a committee a committee's report and levying the assessment of the Baldwin Park Citywide Business Improvement District for fiscal year 2020-21. All right, so at this point, um, staff have any um, comments about this at this point? Uh, Finance Director Rose Tam um, is available. Uh, if you have any questions? Does Councilman have any questions? If not, I'll go ahead and- yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, Rose or uh, Shannon, can you just kind of share again um, the way the allocation is uh, uh, being distributed uh, for this year as in, uh, in comparison to previous years? Go, go ahead, Rose. Uh, yes. Hi, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, the allocation that we have this year due to the Due to last program and event we have, we only are allocated the, the levy to the Bowen Park now and the median outreach consultants uh, services. And also we allocate a small percentage of admin costs and very small, about 1% or 2% for the staff who directly or indirectly in, uh, involved in the program or involved to the general promotion of the business activities in Bowen Park, compared to which is uh, 40,000, about $40,000, and compared to prior year, of $250,000. And due to the limited of BIT we receive, uh, we only be able to allocate about $60,000 admin cost last year to the BIT fund. The remaining $180,000 mainly allocated and used general fund to support the programs and events. Thank you very much. I just wanted uh, our folks on the that are listening in today to understand how this funding is being uh, distributed and uh, benefiting all of us in the city. Thank you, Rose. You're very welcome. All righty, so at this point, uh, thank you very much. I'll go ahead and make a motion for the approval of the fiscal year 2020-21 bid budget allocation. Uh, two, approve resolution number 2020-23 entitled a resolution of the city council of the city of Baldwin Park confirming the advisory the committee's report and living the assessment in the Baldwin Park city citywide uh, business improvement district for fiscal year 2020-2021. That is my motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Mayor. Any objections? See none, so move. This one I will open up the public hearing. Madam City Clerk, did we get anyone opposing or in favor? No one opposing or in favor, Mayor. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. At this point, I'll go ahead and move to close the public hearing. That is my motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any objections? See none, so move. All right. So at this point, I think that's the. We don't have any other committees, right? Let me go to the next one. All right. So. Uh, the item will go on the council. Uh, the one that I do have discussion and, and deliberation on canceling the fireworks stands this year. Uh, 20, I spoken to the mayors, Almani, uh, Zuza, and everyone's changed their mind. So I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that we continue with the fireworks stands for our community. That'll be my motion. I will second that. Second I will third it and fourth it. I am very and, happy with that. And again, this was all based, as we know, the last time we met, it was, it was very fluid what was transpiring so now so at this point there there are there any objections if not at this point uh, we're going to go ahead and 
and bring in July the 4th with a blast. So I, yes, Mayor. And I just want to say, um, I, our residents, uh, will be very happy as you heard, they had a lot of comments about that and why not give our teams and our youth the opportunity to raise money rather than other, I mean, they're all youth, of course, but these are our youth so they can raise money to do whatever they need to do for their, for their school. So yes, that's a great idea. Thank you. Awesome. That's great. Thank you very much. All right. So at this point, I don't, we don't have any other, we don't have the finance, right? The housing. I'm not seeing it. Hello? No, Mayor. Okay. Right, that's thank correct. You. Thank you very much. Before we end the meeting, do we need to call an emergency meeting for the statement that was written by the chief? Uh, legal counsel, is that something that we take on tonight or something we have to set? Uh, Mr. Mayor, you could uh, decide to set it tonight and you, of course, could decide to set it um, uh, later on and uh, just notice the meeting with 24 hours notice. All right, then let's do this. I'll go ahead and call for an emergency meeting. We'll do it online. I don't know what his conversation was about. Uh, so I, I assume uh, from what I'm gathering that he's left the department there. So I don't know what that's about. So. Let's go. I will go ahead and motion for uh, an emergency meeting uh, for tomorrow. I'm trying to think about the time. Uh, can we do? Um, I'm going to be in and out of meetings. Well, well, mayor, uh, mayor, uh, mayor. Okay. I think if you're going to make a motion like that, it, because it's not on the agenda, we would need to have uh, a four fifths vote to put that on the agenda. Is Mr. Pacheco here? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. So I'll go ahead and make a motion for an emergency. Hold on, Mayor. I'm trying to be clear on something. Yes, Did the chief walk out of the meeting? Is that what you said? Seems like it. Is he there? I don't know if he's there. So we'll have to contact the department. Let's get a hold of uh, Captain Finley and find out what happened. Did he make a statement, or I wasn't clear he, on that? He made us. I, I was lost in the what he like. He, he switched he and said something. He made it after after the the city clerk uh, read an extensive uh, a letter that was very extensive. He read out the, of the person. Then he said something about the corruption being stopped and that he would see me in court. So I look forward to whatever this is about. So at this point, I'll go ahead and make a, um, uh, so, uh, uh, all right, so at this point, I'll make a motion for emergency meeting for tomorrow, say um, six o'clock. Mr. Mayor, so uh, we need to make a motion to put the emergency meet, uh, uh, vote for emergency meeting on the agenda. Then once okay. it's on the agenda, you can vote on it. And once you vote on it, it only requires a, uh, a majority vote. Okay, so do we have to wait till tomorrow to, to, until it's on agenda? Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, no, you need to make a motion, emergency motion to put it on the agenda. Okay. Ro Ro Robert, Robert, yes. I believe staff can post the agenda. That's true. Um, with the the either the mayor or three council can call for a special meeting, but we do have to have we have to post it with twenty four hour notice. That's so correct. you know the soonest. If staff went down to city hall and posted it at ten o'clock tonight, that means we would be meeting at ten o'clock tomorrow night. So okay. I'd recommend we do a little research, um, listen okay. to the recording, find out exactly what happened. Okay. Um, Alrighty. And then, and then tomorrow morning, when we have that information, we could call for a meeting and post it properly, um, and it would occur then on Friday, at, at probably most likely the soonest. Okay, that is that is correct. We could do it tonight like this, but it would be much cleaner, Mayor, if we uh, waited till tomorrow, and then we could notice a meeting for um, uh, Friday. Um, uh, anytime, you know, before five o'clock tomorrow. So we could notice it anytime before five o'clock tomorrow for emergency meeting on Friday. So uh, Robert, Mr. I'm sorry, go on, Mr. Pacheco. Hello? I just, I just want to see if Robert, if you could talk, talk to the chief. I, I wasn't clear on what the message was, but maybe uh, I, know, I wasn't, he, he, I wasn't Mayor? clear either. And, and Robert and I can reach out to him. Hold on one at a time. Okay. Alejandra, I'll be like, go ahead. Really quick, I got disconnected, so I don't know what the discussion is right now. Yeah, at this point, we're going to wait for tomorrow to uh, mm -hmm. see what transpired before right. we open emergency meeting. So with that said, sir, um, can Shannon, can you reach out to the police department and make sure that we have the appropriate planning and staffing for tomorrow's, um, you know, uh, I think there's another protest in Baldwin Park yes. um, tomorrow morning. So if you yes. could circle back with them and uh, at least circle back with some of us tonight um, 
on a, that would be great. Will do. That would be great. Yes, it's very important that we have something in place because I believe they will be here tomorrow. All righty. Okay. Uh, so Mayor, I just want to add one more thing. Yes. Uh, at some point, I, I hit the wrong button and some other voices came on. And then when I turned that off and I got back on, that's when I heard the chiefs. I'm not sure if it was the chief or something that I tapped into that heard. And the chief that issued some type of message there. You have the city manager talk to him and kind of clarify this before. We talk yeah, this let let, uh, let me reach let me reach out to him. I know everything is set for tomorrow, but I will reach out to the command staff, make sure they're ready. I'll reach out to the chief. I will also transcribe the recording because I'm not sure uh, okay. what we heard, and then we'll have that information. Okay, thank you. you. Know what, Shannon, yeah, I I I think that would be um, you know, very judicious of us. Like, you know, let's touch base with the chief, make sure, you know, we understand what's happening clearly because uh, today was, an, it, it, you know, it, with the protest and um, they're just, emotions are running high right now. And I think that more than, more than anything, we need to, we need to look at how we support our staff during difficult times and how we support staff during these challenges and uh you know at the end of the day we, we really have to look at what is in the best interest of our city so let's just put you know this day which started with a, a protest and you know perhaps lack of support and all of it can we just can we look at it you know very objectively please and so then, um and then and then you know outline the next steps uh, so that, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't shoot ourselves in the foot. We don't cause ourselves more, uh, challenges than we need here. And that would be my recommendation. So mayor, uh, again, I wasn't clear on what happened. I just heard you making a motion for something, but I don't know what it was about because yeah, I was the disconnected. Motion, Alejandro, the motions to address, uh, when the, le when the letter that was read was finished, the chief all of a sudden said, this is going to stop or corruption. I'm going to see you in court. I'm assuming he was referring to me, legal counsel. Yes, my oh. recollection. My recollection was that he, after the uh, comments were read, he said the corruption stops tonight. Mr. Mayor, Mr. City Attorney, Mr. City Manager, I will see you in court. That's my recollection. I believe. I believe he also added me in in his comment. Okay, maybe uh, Council Member Hernandez too. And that's fine. I mean, he's entitled to so, uh, Vice Mayor Hernandez. Yeah, that's yeah. Fine. Uh, Yes, it's a good idea, Shannon. Uh, please try reaching out to him, find out what's going on, and let's take it from there. Okay, do me a big favor. Um, do. do me a big favor, Shannon. Can you please send the letter that was read by, by the uh, city clerk to all the council members? I want it tonight. Okay, Jean, if you could forward that to me and I will distribute it. Yes, I will. Thank you, Shannon. Okay. All righty, so at this point, I will move for adjournment. That is my motion. Second. 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 See none, so move. Let's be, let's, uh, be safe, everyone. I will not be able to attend the uh, program uh, protest tomorrow morning. For those of you that are going to be there, because I'm going to meet all day tomorrow, a workshop. So, uh, let, let's uh, let's wish the best and uh, Shannon. Let's get a hold of Finley. He's the ca acting captain, and let's get things going. All righty. Yes, okay, sir. Vivo. Mayor. Yes. This is Manny. Just want to provide a friendly reminder. I, tomorrow is Ballin Park High School uh, drive graduation. Graduation. Mm -hmm. So you received emails from uh, the school district in regards to that timetable. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, at this point, I'm going to move for a German. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any objection? See none so much. Viva Ballon Park. Take care. Viva Ballon Park. Right. Take care. Bye-bye.